So, <laughs> one, one, you can't help the fact that you're continually learning and you're continually realising the constraints that you've been working under with existent language. Yeah, but this is, I just had a wonderful eureka moment of what you described there. Yeah. In terms of the communion of space. Yes. Yeah, because of these tubes that go exactly. through in numbers. So exactly. numbers are all, they, they create these flows between them. Yeah. That I've never seen before. Yeah, that's right. You're but, seeing it. Yeah. Okay. That's wonderful. Yes, Thank it you. is. It is, it is quite wonderful actually. I mean, in there you can, fi you can find just about all the physical laws as well. And it's but you're never going to get a cube, are you? You're never going to get a no, straight no. edged... No, no, you can get a cube very easily, simply by nesting a series of spheres next to one another, as you get, which is what you get in a crystal lattice. But they're never going to be pure like that, are they? Because they'll always be in a rounding, connecting space, connecting space. They're never going to be straight lines. Well, yes, actually, huh. there is a way. I mean, essentially what you do, and this is quite well known, is you close pack uh -huh. spheres. If, 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 if the spheres are all identical, mm -hmm. yeah, if you close pack, pack a lot of spheres, you mm -hmm. actually produce a cubical matrix. We won't go into that just Sorry. yet, but that's essentially how you get salt crystals. <laughs> and the spaces in between. Yes. You want to, if we go to this picture now, Mm -hmm. What I've actually tried to show in this painting is, is, is essentially that, that whole logic mm -hmm. whereby instead of seeing the numbers as discrete points, mm -hmm. yeah, as stopping points, we see them as channels, channels yes. yeah, that flow into and out of one another, mm -hmm. it's as simple as that. This particular, po and, and so this is actually a representation of the fluid no fluid logic number two, mm -hmm. which is one, two, three, mm -hmm. which is two with its neighbourhood of one and three. Mm -hmm. yeah? And looking at these now in a continuous space including form as channels into and out of one another, yeah? instead of as stopping points, as discrete stopping points along a line. The painting itself is based on it's sort of on a mixture of, of, of ideas. It's partly it's 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 called Channel Number Five, <laughs> and it actually is about the fifth dimension, or where the fifth dimension is the infinite, mm -hmm. yeah, the the, the the everywhere, the non-local mm -hmm. of nature. Mm -hmm. So what is so, but 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 is actually looking at how we can think of numbers in a very different way, mm. and in a way that doesn't isolate mm. the I, the number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've, we're living in a culture which isolates the I, the number one, mm -hmm. in, in a very obvious mm. way. And the song Green Grow the Rushes, though, sort of epitomizes that, because we talk about one is one and all alone, two, two, the lily white boys, three, three, the rivals. Mm. And so this is a painting which is talking about the rivalry, mm. the opposition, the sense of bipolarity mm. that arises when we understand mm. numbers only in, mm. as discrete points along a line, mm. and how that rivalry can, and indeed conflict can be resolved mm. um, <clears throat> when we treat the numbers as spatial channels, mm -hmm. distinct but not discrete. Mm -hmm. So instead of having discrete numbers, which are discontinuous, mm -hmm. we have distinct numbers, which are continuous mm -hmm. uh, with one another and through one another. And so I, I, I actually got a poem which go, goes with this, but, but, but essentially it's, 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 it's all based on those kinds of ideas, is that we suddenly s we see the number one no longer as being all alone, yeah, mm -hmm. but a channel which draws into itself and into, into number two. And similarly, the three is feeding back into two. Mm -hmm. And instead of treat, and, and what I've done here is by, by presenting the mirror image of mm -hmm. the number two, mm -hmm. what I've also illustrated is that we've got a reciprocal two-way flow mm -hmm. through the number two as a channel. So we've got a flow coming mm -hmm. from that direction, we've got a flow coming from, a complementary flow going from that direction. So we've mm -hmm. got the inflow and the outflow Mm. combined and when you do that of course what you produce just happens to be a heart mm. which is actually about love mm. which is essentially the inclusion of space means the inclusion of love
Mm. It's as simple as that. When we and what I've also done here is I've I've I've, I've put this one two three mm -hmm. in on a blackness mm -hmm. on a yeah, mm -hmm. and I've contrasted the blackness, mm -hmm. which is the darkness mm -hmm. that rationality likes to exclude, mm -hmm. the no nothingness that rationality can't cope with, mm -hmm. which is really a no thingness. And I've related that to the gold, silver, and bronze of the Olympic of, of sovereignty and the Olympic idea of winners and losers and first, second, and third, where somehow it's better to be one and not the other. Uh, <clears throat> and I've actually so we've got gold, silver, bronze. The silver is associated with the second, obviously the gold with one, the <clears throat> bronze with three. Um, and sort of really showing that actually to regard any of these as better than or worse than one another is a profound problem. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's essentially, it's, it's, there are many other aspects of other kinds of symbolism in there, but it's, it's essentially mm. uh, converting a form of mathematics and a form of logic which is all based on alienation <coughs> one from the other mm. into a form of lo a form of mathematics and a form of logic where e every one flows into and out of every other so instead of having a, you, a, a a divisive logic of one or other or even a dialectic logic of both both one and other but still in mm. contradiction mm. We have an inclusional logic of one in other, um, and that's really important. That's really cool. I've got two questions from now. I think I need to explain. I understood, I understood your neighbourhood. Mm -hmm. You need neighbourhoods one, two, three. Really understand that. Okay. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Right. Say, say we two. Two is one and one. They're not neighbourhoods. That makes two. So does it? Is there, is there another layer? Well, you see, you're, I mean, you're already struggling because it, because you're, you're you're trying to marry the conventional right. mathematical representation with the the fluid. So mathematical fluid mathematics couldn't balance my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> it probably wouldn't be very interested in bank accounts in the first place. <laughs> okay. But it could, yeah. actually. No, I'm just worried that yeah. we've got, we've got seven minutes left. Okay. Right. okay. Just um, another question about your, your relational one, two, three. You use yeah. Ara Ara Arabic numbers. Yes, indeed. I mean, would it work for Japanese numbers or Chinese numbers? It ought to. I mean, it's, those are just labels. Yeah, sure. But that diagram you beautifully portrayed is, is using Arabic numbers. It is, yes. Arabic, Arabic context. Your, it's using your context, isn't it? Yeah. So it's very I, important just to indicate that the zero is effectively included in the in the core. Right. Okay. And that's a very important aspect. Is that this is what Larry Larry Shakunli calls this the core identity is what he calls a zeroid. Zeroid. The zero because the zero is now seen not as nothingness but as the balancing out of of of. of of positive and negative, of receptive and responsive. Didn't you say zero doesn't exist? Zero in conventional mathematics is placed outside reality. Right. In transfigural mathematics yeah. is placed within reality. But zero doesn't have a meaning in that sense. It can't it's have it. It's a continuum. Zero in the in, in it's the just transfig point. Vig zero is the in transfigural sense is the balance of the inner with the outer. All right. Okay. So okay. It's, it represents the dynamic balancing of the alpha and the omega. Okay. The so positive and the so-called positive, the receptive and the responsive. Okay. So it, it's got a value attached to it then. It's right. the most important of all. <laughs> well, we've got to get to the point. Anyway, it's, it's, we've got to understand it's, it's, that. It's the gravitational centre.